zapytać. So Ray Love Roses, that's a Queen Elizabeth Rose. And then Ray and Marion are very active in our senior uh, adults group here at the Church, the Chapelites. And Marianne Rasmussen is our MC for that group. And she's always writing great poems. So on the back is a poem that uh, I asked her to write about Ray. I just wanted to, to call that out uh, for you. Okay, let's, let's, let's open in, in prayer. Father, we thank you for your love for it. Us. And we thank you for this day when we can come and, and celebrate a life well lived. I just pray for your comfort now for the, uh, for the family and all of Ray's many, many friends. Um, he's, he's left a hole. He's left a, um, a big spot on the, on the golf course, uh, but more importantly in his family. So we just thank you for your, your love for us and your presence here today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We were supposed to have a flag ceremony, but I haven't seen the, the gentleman yet, so we'll see if they show up later, and we'll do that at the end. At <clears throat> this time, I'd like to read to you Psalm 23, and I'm going to read this out of the King James Version because that would have been the version that Ray learned it uh, in. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Josie. We're going to sing together, and it's such joy to be together in this room, even if it's sometimes under circumstances like these. So let's agree together that um, we loved Ray, and he would love us to sing, and sing strong. So we're going to sing, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning brings the vernal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other side and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder 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 I'll be there on that bright and cloud this morning when the day Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen shall to gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. Let us 
talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, together as a family and grabbed some pictures and uh, Brian actually found some old videos of, uh, of Ray. So we've put that together in a uh, short video that we would like to show you now. It gives you a little uh, picture of Ray's life. That's the good news. Dad found good news in everything. Waiting forever for the fivesome in front, but on a gorgeous day, that's the good news. Just enough room for pumpkin pie after a huge Thanksgiving dinner, that's the good news. Friends and family gathered together for any reason, that's the good news. Raymond Ward King was born near Ojai, California on November 24, 1930, to Brian and Rose King. Among his jobs growing up was working the smudge pots in the orange groves around Ojai to protect the fruit from frost. He graduated from Nordoff High School in 1948, where he embraced the King family passion for tennis. In 1952, he graduated from the University of California at Santa Barbara, where he met his sweetheart, Marion March. Ray and Marion married later that year, and Dad promptly went into the Army. In fact, their wedding date had to be moved up a week at the last minute to accommodate the very eager draft board. They only saw each other on weekends for the first nine months of their marriage, while Marion completed a year of teaching in Bakersfield, and Ray was stationed at Camp San Luis Obispo. In the pre-cell phone era, Mom would go to the station without knowing for certain if Dad would be stuck on base or actually arriving on the bus. Most times he did, and that was the good news. After completing his active duty, Ray entered the teaching field and taught graphic arts and architectural drawing at Bellflower High School in Bellflower, California. He taught there for 35 years and was a printing teacher extraordinaire. He silk screened every ribbon for the football games, printed every school newspaper, and printed every program for every performance at the high school. The Bellflower High School Annual was dedicated to him in 1967. And later, on the occasion of his retirement, observed that he was a retiring gentleman. Indeed, he lived his life as the very definition of a gentleman. He and Marion moved to Camino Island in 2004 and have been active in the Chapelite Group and the Food Pantry at Camino Chapel. Ray enjoyed golf, gardening, and most of all, family. In 1953, Ray and Marion started their family with Kathy, who was married to Steve Redfern. She is a teacher at Stanwood High School. In 1957, Brian was born. He is married to Jacqueline and is a professor at the University of California in San Francisco. In 1961, Brenda was born. She is married to Steve Durden and is a teacher and organist in Michigan. Dad never cut corners. If a paint job required multiple coats, he did it. 
every pruned rose bush received a dab of tar to seal every cut. While kids are the stars of the movie he filmed, the manicured Dichondra ground cover was a work of art. Dichondra, of course, requires weeding by hand because Weed Killer would kill it too, as would walking on it on a frosty morning or riding your bicycle across it, as the paperboy perfected. When I got my first formal lesson in lawn mowing, Dad emphasized, the difference is edging. That translated to going around the entire perimeter with scissors. But the lawn was always beautiful and soft and cool in the Southern California sun. And that was the good news. Ray and Marion's grandchildren were the apple of his eye. Kathy's daughter, Laura, married to Ryan Friedman, graduated from Point Loma University and is a nurse practitioner in Boston. Kathy's son, Thomas, graduated from UCLA and is a computer programmer soon to be living in Berlin. Kathy's daughter, Anne, married to Nathan Scott, graduated from Claremont McKenna College and is a stay-at-home mom living in Overland Park, Kansas. Kathy's son, Daniel, married to Stephanie, graduated from Whitworth University and is working for a financial firm in Boston. Brian's son, Harrison, graduated from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo with a degree in aerospace engineering and will continue there next year to complete a master's degree. Brian's daughter, Annalise, graduated from PLU with a degree in music education and will complete her student teaching next year before applying for a Fulbright. Brenda's son, Matthew, is working full-time in Texas to save money for college. Brenda's daughter, Sarah, will be attending Evergreen State College. And the good news is that there are also great-grandchildren. Laura and Ryan have three little boys, Emmett, Finn, and Riley. Anne's children are Bradley, Eleanor, and Patrick. Patrick shared a special bond with his great-grandpa, known as Pa. But the center of Ray's universe the love of his life was Marion. They enjoyed being together and spent a lot of time doing various activities together. They both golfed, they traveled, they cooked at chapelites together, and they gardened together. They were perfect together. Ray's ultimate gardening specialty was roses, he kept a Queen Elizabeth rose from his father's rose garden and propagated and shared a plant that is growing in Brian's garden now, too. Another activity Ray and Marion enjoyed was ballroom dancing. They were good. Really good. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ray will be missed by many people whose passing leaves a great hole in our lives. But we are forever grateful to God for having the privilege of having him in our lives. And in heaven, he is no doubt already working on a project list and trimming up the place. As we go about our days between now and when we see him there, let's look at the clouds and see if the edges aren't a little cleaner. At the horizon line, let's see if it isn't a little sharper. Look at the roses and see if they aren't a little prettier. There are probably lots of other things he's working on and will be excited to share with us in heaven. And that's the good news. That was my wife, who was a little kicked at being dragged through the water by her, uh, her father there at the end. Uh, at this time, uh, Ray's daughter Brenda is going to come and play my tribute.
before I get into just uh, uh, some brief words of encouragement for us here today, Gloria Kathan, when she came in here this afternoon, said she'd written up something uh, about Ray. And I, I want to read this to you because it gives you an idea of an impact that someone, uh, that Ray made on, on another, another life. So let me read this at this time. And this is from Gloria Kathan. My husband and I lived in Camelot, which is where my husband met Ray. Jerry used to come home from some meeting where he and Ray were, and Jerry would always tell me how much he liked Ray King and what a fine man he was. At the time, I didn't know who Ray was, and I only got to really meet him and Marion at my husband's memorial. And then later, I would see them <clears throat> at the heritage service in church. When I would see Ray and Marion in church, I was always uplifted by their obvious devotion they had for each other. They were a total loving team. Some people you meet just seem to make your life better somehow, even if it's during small moments. After Jerry passed away and I would see Ray and Marion, Marion in church, Ray would always extend his hand in greeting to me in such a manner that he was always filled with compassion and understanding. His big smile accompanied by the greeting always gave me encouragement and made me feel valued and that someone understood and cared about Jerry and my situation too. I asked Jesus if Ray and Marion can have extra rewards and blessings for their considerate kindnesses that they have both shown to Jerry and me. It is an honor to be here today to be able to honor Ray King, a kind gentleman, gentle man, and true gentleman. Sincerely, Gloria Kathan. And that leads me to this real briefly. If you have a memory of Ray, one of the great things you can do is write that down and mail that to Marion because she can read those over and, uh, and over again. And that can, that can really bring comfort, uh, comfort to her. Well, let me give you some brief words of encouragement from God's, uh, God's word. When someone we love dies unexpectedly, which which this was uh, when I uh, took Ray and Marion to Ray's uh, doctor's appointment on a Monday and they asked him his birth date. Uh, when I heard it, I texted my wife and I said, did you realize your dad's gonna be 87 years old this year? Because we always thought he was like in his early 70s. He was just so active and, and the way he looked. So it was real unexpected, his, his death. Um, there is a tremendous amount of shock when a husband, a father, a brother, a friend is suddenly no longer with us, it can trigger very strong emotions, reactions, and questions. So this afternoon, I want to briefly mention four truths that are important for us at this time. First, death is a painful reminder. Death reminds us that we live in a fallen, imperfect world. We are reminded of our failings, flaws, and limitations. Anytime we have a memorial service, we are reminded of the shadow that has been cast over humanity because of Adam's sin. Paul said in Romans 5.12 that sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. But death doesn't merely remind us of the universal nature of our problems. Because God did not leave us in this valley or leave us under the shadow. The second truth is, when we know God and the truth of his scripture, death also brings the realization that God has a solution, something greater than the painful reminder. We, we were just reminded that death came into the world through the sin of one man, but that's not the entire picture. Romans 6.23 reads, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. John 3, 16, probably the most well-known verse in the Bible reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We have an awesome realization today that God has acted on our behalf and provided for us the answer to our need. This realization is why the psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Our realization is that life has triumphed over death. 
Mercy and grace have triumphed over sin and justification has triumphed over condemnation. At Ray's Gravesides about two and a half weeks ago, I said, we don't have to hope. We don't have to wonder. We don't have to pray that Ray did enough to make it into heaven because he couldn't do enough. Eternal life is a gift. And because Ray accepted that gift, his last moment of existence on earth led immediately to his first moment in the presence of Jesus. And that gives us great comfort at this time. The third truth is that the realization that the realization has a solution leads us to a promised resurrection. There's a period of time where, as the Bible describes, we are absent from the body and present with the Lord. One of the most clearly taught doctrines of Scripture is that of the resurrection. After the crucifixion of Jesus, a couple of women came early the next morning to the tomb, and they found the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. And while they were wondering about this, the Bible says all of a sudden two angels appeared and the women were really scared. Luke 24, 5 through 6 records the angels saying to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 reads, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. And 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 54 reads, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. The grave is not the end. And that is great comfort and hope today. The fourth truth is that, is that because of the resurrection, we also have the hope of an unending reunion. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 reads, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Notice how powerful and beautiful those words are. And so we will be with the Lord forever. There will be no isolation in heaven. We will not be separated from each other. Heaven for us will be a place of unending reunion. Revelation 21, 3 through 4, gives us just a glimpse of what heaven is going to be like. It reads, And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. As I close, I want to read for you this brief story that I found that I believe summarizes this service for Ray this afternoon. A man wrote, I was standing a few feet away from Grandma's casket, Visitation hours were over, and the staff of the, from the funeral home had just steered the last guest out the door and into the hallway. My family was left alone to share a few private moments and to say goodbye. Eventually, I was the only one left in the room. That somehow made it easier, because then I could step up, look at the physical body that had housed such a wonderful soul, and just say whatever came naturally. What came out was a cheerful, see you later, Grandma. If I had that moment to live over again, I wouldn't change a thing. Grandma was a Christian. 
The closeness between us went far beyond this temporary grandma-grandson thing. I really would see her later in heaven and in a way unlimited by age or time or physical things. The later part of what I said to her, I was really saying to myself, it was a little sad. I won't see her for what seems like a long time. But the see you part of what I said expressed what the Bible calls hope, a confident optimism that God controls the future even after death. That's good news for all of us who have a personal relationship with him. No matter what happens, no matter where life takes us, we'll always see each other again. Josie, would you come lead us in our final song? Perfect song to follow that up when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed. He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling day shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize be us soon his beauty will behold soon the pearly gates will open we shall strut the streets of gold when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus we'll sing and shout the Well, it looks like our flag people didn't make it, so some night Brian and I will go down to a military base and steal one of their flags. Wait a minute. We're not looking. Let's, uh, let's close in prayer. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you again for uh, this day when we can come and remember Ray's life. He truly was a... Uh, a gentle man. Uh, what a great gardener. Great, uh, grew great flowers, beautiful roses, vegetable garden. Um, he had a lot of talents. And as was said in the video, his passing leaves a great hole. But Father, I'm glad that this isn't the end of the story. That the, for all that have accepted Jesus as their Savior, we will see him again. What an incredible reunion that is going to be. But until then, Father, I, I pray for, for comfort, especially for Marion, at the, the loss of someone who just seemed like Ray and Marion King was one word. And, and, 
And now half of, of that is gone. So I pray for her. I pray for the rest of the um, family, the extended family, but that we would never forget, never forget that we have a great reunion coming. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.